We also have the molar analysis and then a gravimetric analysis. This is the term for a mass basis. Probably the best way to think about this is you need to go back and forth between molar, number of moles, and mass, m. How do you do that? If you multiply by the cap m, the molar mass, you get this equation, true? Is that how you jump back and forth? And you're very good at using the molar mass. Whenever I solve a problem like this, I encourage you to set it up in a table. Think about the component. Think about the molar mass in kilograms per kilomole. Think about the amount maybe in kilomoles. The order of the table isn't as important as the information in the table. Y is a mole fraction. So Y, I, is the number of moles of the species or component I divided by the total number of moles. Sometimes we'll put a TOT for total. Sometimes just leave it off. N without a subscript be the total number of moles in that gas mixture. Maybe over here, mass in kilograms. And then the last one, mass fraction. So on a molar basis, you talk about the mole fraction, Y. On a mass basis, you talk about the mass fraction. The mass fraction for component I is the mass of that component divided by the total mass in the mixture. You just have to make up maybe a, um, to, to work through this back and forth, but if you had uh, nitrogen, maybe oxygen, maybe the molar mass of nitrogen, what, 28, uh, 32, maybe you said that it was... Uh, three moles and four moles, then if you did the sum, that would be seven moles, true? Guess what Y would be? Three-sevenths and four-sevenths. And then what is the mass if I had three kilomoles of nitrogen? It's three times 28. That gives me how many? That's times 28. And four times 32. And then if you sum that up, you get the total amount. Of mass and then to get the mass fraction it would be the 3 times the 28 divided by that sum of the mass and 4 times 32 divided by the sum of the mass so you can go between <clears throat> mole fraction and mass fraction use a table it helps organize the information